Hello everyone, Mike Giblin here. Thank you for joining me. Um, it's a lovely sunny day here in Newcastle, UK. Um, this morning I thought I would do a little bit of sketching for you and talk you through my process a little bit. Um, the individual steps that I take when I'm working on a sketch and how I break everything down and uh, arrive at a final, a final sketch which can then be taken on to colour or whatever you want to do with it. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get cracking. Now today, just tweak you around there. Today I'm gonna to be working on this reference photo of Liam Gallagher. Now I've drawn Liam a lot over the years. I just, uh, I've always enjoyed his look. He seems to have an endlessly fascinating face to draw. Um, it's quite unusual that I do a, a profile view like this. I just, um, I clocked this this one on uh, Oasis Planet, an Instagram page, um, which has some really good photos of Liam and Noel and the band, and uh, it just leapt out of me, and I thought, oh, that's that's really cool. So I'm going to uh, have a little attempt to draw this and uh, talk you through it. Let me just adjust this ever so slightly. All right. Okay. So. Um, Okay, my first step on any drawing is just to, to take a few moments and look at the reference, kind of think where the sort of line of action is, where the, the shape, the big shapes are, what the pose is. Um, so with this one, I'm gonna, this isn't gonna make much sense at first, but I kind of, I see this structure here, which kind of looks like groove from Despicable Me, you know, the, the silhouette of that. I'm gonna go up like that, across like that, right? is sort of this mountain with a little head on the top, which goes that way. So that's, that's his neck. Right. That's the hood. Comes out like that. Comes down like that. Okay. So next, I'm going to just take a look and see where the eyes take place in the whole thing. I've got a line in there like that. Okay. Um, Maybe I'll just put a little mark in there to indicate. All right. Do that. Now, all the while I'm doing this, I'm looking at angles, I'm looking at what the relationships are between the features, what joins up with what. So I'm keeping one eye on where everything should be, but I'm also looking for areas that I can exaggerate as well. Okay. Um, I know I can't see it. I know his top lip's behind there somewhere, so I'm gonna come down like that. All these vertical lines here, which can connect with his uh, nose. All right. Now Liam's bottom lip disappears altogether a lot of the time when he's drawn. Okay, so this comes like this, but then that goes out like that. Yeah. Chin as well. He hasn't got a big chin, but it's certainly protruding. So you can already see what I've done here has completely obliterated my initial structural sketch, which is something that happens a lot. Um, and isn't something to worry about. Those first marks are simply to get you off the ground and to get you started. And, um, and if you later go over them, that's cool. Don't worry too much about it. It's not an issue. Um, then go up there like that. Now his eyes are quite sunken into his head, so. And he's got these big eyelids. I'll tell you what, at this stage, I might just uh, get an indication of the microphone there. It's rising up a little bit, so we'll do that, we'll do that. Okay, cool. Right, so, keeping with that, we'll go, that line that was originally there, we'll now make it go there. Um, 
this part of his head here is small compared to the rest, so I'm going to make it even smaller. And then the hair, his hair is bunched up on the back of his head because he's got that characteristic sort of shoulders open, hunched sort of look, you know. Uh, these brows aren't as bushy as they once were, but they're still there. So do that. And as a his ear pretty much lines up with his mouth, so I'm going to just draw a line there, which I'll go over later on. Okay. Bit of hair there. There's the hood. Just imagine the coat isn't there, we'll see the neck goes down, then it lines up with this thing here. Okay, so like that. Look at all this nonsense going on here. Probably the middle of summer, but he's still wearing his trademark on rack. Good old Liam. Um, there's his shoulder, so I'm gonna just indicate his shoulder. At the moment he's looking like too chunky. He's not chunky, he's just wearing a winter jacket in the middle of summer. Um, so. Okay, that indicates the arms are behind the back. And over here. of his teeth can't say much but it's there they are there and this is the eyebrow this one goes here okay now what I'll do now is I'm going to go in with a slightly darker coloured pencil and just refine those lines a bit more. People do ask me why I use the um, coloured pencil. It's for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I just think it looks cool. <laughs> um, I was drawn to um, animation roughs earlier in my career and I just always liked the, um, the way the animators kind of were able to loosely... Um, pencil in the, the characters, these coloured pencils before they were later refined in, in darker ink or pencil or whatever. Um, so that was that's part of it. Second is it just allows me to explore everything before I get into um, final darker lines. It's there's, there's no rules, I can, I can draw whatever I want. Um, but there's a third reason which is very, very important, which is if I later decide I want to do something with this, like i.e. scan it in, and maybe colour it or whatever, it's a piece of cake to knock out those red lines in Photoshop and all I'm left with, once I've done the graphite, is the graphite, you know, which you'll see later. But uh, for now, um, this is what we're going with. Right, so. Go in there like that. Nostril goes higher up than that. He's got quite pronounced nostrils. So, yeah. so we're not being precious about anything at this stage. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong. We're just we're really just exploring and trying to get a portrait which looks like Liam in this pose, but also because I'm a caricaturist. Um, has some exaggeration. You know, it's 
And oftentimes when I start, I'm not always sure what those exaggerations are going to be, but um, there you go. First and foremost, it's about capturing that lightness. And if you can capture that lightness, that undeniability, that's getting some uh, fun exaggerations in there as well. Um, then you've got yourself a successful drawing. She goes further down there, let's take it further. You'll see I will just randomly shade in areas at this stage just to get an idea for the, the lights and the darks and all the forms and things. I would say values, but I'm not, I'm not much of a painter, so I don't really want to use phrases that are tend to be my vocabulary. I'm much more an illustrator and I think more in terms of a solid line drawn and then colouring it rather than form and shape and values and all that sort of stuff but it's essentially the same thing. It's lights and darks to try and bring out the form. Okay, let's put a pocket there. It's jutting out a bit too much, that chin. I mean, just, just bring that neck. That's better. Yeah, nice. Okay. Right, okay, I'm, I think we're on the right track here. So what I'll do now is uh, I'm going to go in with my graphite, which is just a 9B Faber-Castell pit graphite, which has a nice black line. I'm going to go in there and just refine some of these lines further. A bow to his nose that I haven't done yet. That's it. Liam's always had these uh, big girly eyelashes. He used to call him makeup face when he was a kid, apparently. I read that somewhere. Good looking guy, still, though. He's had the last laugh, isn't he? All the while I'm still looking at the shapes of things. And what connects to what connects to what and where things are placed in relation to one another. Yeah. 
Not as obvious here, but Liam's much angrier these days when he sings. You look at his uh, early 90s stuff. He kind of looked a bit more sort of listless and spaced out, which he probably was to be fair, but uh, these days there's sort of like an anger and a snarl at how he sings. It's, uh, it's not as obvious in this picture, but I've noticed it. Um, yeah, just know that goes behind there, but uh, Very distinctive this area here, so I want to get it right. So that's it. Yeah. I think there might be more of a sort of swan-like sweep to that than I originally thought. So like that. I always like to get a bit of flamboyance in where, where I can. Now I'm looking at it now, let's see I've drawn his ear too high. His ear is meant to be on level with his, his mouth. So I'm just gonna, not even re-sketch it, I'm just gonna do it straight in the graphite. So we've got that flat bottom. It comes like that. And the hair is kind of on a par with the top of the top lip, so just Again, I'm not going to worry about the hair being precise at this point. I mean, hair isn't hair like this isn't precise anyway. But uh, I can refine later on. That'll do. So this stage has started to get a bit smudgy, so I'm going to bring in an extra sheet. Just. Stop a lot of those smudges from happening. I need to get one of those gloves, you know, like a you see an artist wearing a glove which covers that part of the hand, which, which stops all that. I need to get one. Take shape a wee bit more. So again, you can see I'm um, focusing very much on getting those lines in and kind of getting a solid design down before I do anything else. I'm, I'm not even thinking about shading or anything like that. I just want to get those lines where they need to be. Or do anything else right so that comes out there just looking for ways I can stylize it let's do that straight against curved nice there's a character designer extraordinaire Stephen Silver taught, taught me that it's like the importance of lines and curves and it's uh, it's more important in, in character design really but I, I find myself using it just in caricature as well it's um makes for just a, an appealing design you know if you can get a little bit of that going on in there right I can see this all this like a, an arrowhead here, so I'm just gonna do that. If I 
you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I often use markers as well. Like once I put all the, all the graphite in, a little bit of uh, pencil cross hatching. I quite often go in with a, some grey markers and just kind of add some extra shading and things. I probably won't do that today for the purposes of time, but um, I like to kind of blend the, blend the shading a bit more using markers quite, quite frequently. Very loose with these folds and things for now. Just not sure everything's where, where it should be. Alright, I might just uh, add a little bit of texture to this hair at this stage. Oh, got a few greys coming in there, Liam. That's what happens when it's uh, us, us guys hit mid 40s. I should know. Coming quite the silver fox these days. I'll do now is I'm going to flip this over and look at it and kind of hold up to the light to see if there's any mistakes that need to be remedied. I think I possibly made his chin too pointy. He looks a bit like Judge Doom um, from Roger Rabbit. I don't know where I put my eraser. There it is. I think I'll just correct that a little bit. Okay. Um, Probably the basis for further exploration. Um, yeah, hang on while everyone's still here. Let me just shade this in a little bit. Got some of this stringy nonsense going on here. So I'd say that there is probably, um, actually that nose needs to be more upturned, I'll, I'll say that straight away. But regardless, that is the good, a good starting point for where I might want to take it, if I want to take it any further. I know I can always scan that in and make some tweaks and, and push this and pull that. Um, and that is, that's quite often the case with sketches that I do, some get closer to how I see them. Um, some need a bit of work 
that's okay. If I get to about 80% with the sketch, I'm, I'm happy with that. Because I know I can always push it that extra 20% in Photoshop later to make it uh, to make it the way I want it. Okay. Right, Low battery. Okay, thank you once again, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, hang on. I hope you've enjoyed this little view of my process. Um, thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope to do more of these in future. And thanks for stopping by. Okay.